And then you'll give the, the team the weekend off? Uh, a couple days. We'll give them a couple days. Uh, we'll be back at it Sunday, full steam ahead. Um, Sunday will be uh, preparation all USC on Sunday. So we'll have, uh, we'll have a couple days here and there. They had yesterday off, and, um, and then we'll, we'll get at it. But our goal is to see how good we can be. And um, I tell them they got, you know, the springtime to get off. What's the itinerary for you and the coaches this week for recruiting? Um, uh, all of our coaches will be on the road on Thursday and Friday. And uh, we all have – we'll be hitting – I think it looked like 28 games or something like that. I know I have four games that I'm going to get to in the two days that I'll be out. Um, games that are on Thursday night and Friday night. Uh, be able to split my time up at halves, different games. We've got coaches uh, heading out west-west over water. And then we have coaches that will be uh, a lot of, I think we'll have four or so in Arizona and about four in California, and then one, two in Texas. Yeah, in terms of what games you go to, what games, what recruits you feel like you need to go see during this time? Yeah, there, there's certain, um, you know, I, for me, I, I need to, I like to get my eyes on quarterbacks. If I can get my eyes on quarterbacks, I like to get my eyes on, uh, if we have a school that has numerous kids that are available um, to look at, you know, that it's not a game with just a player. Um, I like to do that. So th certain games have a lot of prospects. Those are always good. There are certain programs that are just very well established um, in the state that I'd like to get my, uh, just be able to go out there and, and see, see the, the, uh, the good football that occurs there. And then um, there might be a need or a want to get to a certain place. But, uh, you know, I'll probably have to go out a couple times uh, here in the next few weeks on a Friday night, just to be able to catch a game if I can, or a quarter or half, and then get back. And then uh, otherwise, we'll be full steam ahead afterwards. The rest of our coaches will be really position recruiting. They'll be uh, looking at their own positions. Has the messaging and or reception changed at all this year recruiting versus last year? Yeah, um, a little bit, a little bit different. Um, reception's been great, but the messaging you know, I, I think you, the, the way it looks uh, for us is, is pretty simple. You know, you're going to – last year we were trying to figure out, you know, exactly what we are going to be. Um, this year we're, we're pretty confident that we're going to be really good at offensive football team. Um, we've gone, you know, from 101st to 25th. We've gone from 114th in explosives to second. We – a top 10 passing team. And they're all young. They're all young players. So if you're out there as a recruit um, on offense, you're going to want to be a part of a team that's very explosive, that scores a lot, that throws the ball a lot, that um, has a sophomore quarterback, unlike most of the other programs that we're competing against that have senior quarterbacks. Um, if you're a defensive player, you have an opportunity to come in here and compete and start right away. Uh, we have a lot of veteran players that um, on the defensive side. So you have opportunity in that regard to, to make kind of the same impact that our offensive guys made this past off season. If you look at our game against Washington a year ago, um, there was not one player that touched the ball against Washington in 2021 that was on the field in 2022. Not one offensive player. So not one skilled player. So if you look at the receiving, the rushing, the quarterback, not one offensive player that was on the uh, box score played in the game this week. Would you say you guys are emphasizing more on 2024 recruits, or is it a combination of 23 and 24, and how many of them are offensive and defensive players? Uh, we're very focused on 23 right now. Um, our position coaches are focused on 24. I'm very focused on 23 and 24 a little bit, but uh, I'm all about, you know, as we're building – you know, this group that's coming in is going to be a huge part, right? The, the young freshmen that we have are going to continue to get better, um, as we know, as we see every week. And then um, the guys that will be coming in to join that group, we're going to probably try to bring in 16 or 17 guys mid-year in January again. Um, and if we can do that, which we will be able to do that, uh, there will be a lot of new, again, but that's okay. 
And, um, you know, then based on numbers, we'll just figure out how many offense and how many defense. But you guys can check to see the numbers. They're out there. Long time standing statements of success in football is, is halftime adjustments. And, and this team right now is being outscored by 50 in the third quarter. What do you assess for the issues? Yeah, I don't know. I, we scored 25 points in the second half. We scored every time we touched it. Um, so I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, I know that we went out there this past week. Um, we scored four straight, four touchdowns or three touchdowns and a field goal. And the last, the only other offensive drive we had was the last drive of the game. So not sure there. Um, I think the finals, I think it was 21, 14 at halftime. And it was, if you were to look at just the second half, it was 28, 25. So, um, or 28, excuse me. Yeah. 28, 25. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know if that, there's any correlation whatsoever there at all about halftime adjustments. Or um, I think both teams probably continued to play well. Um, we certainly scored every chance we had on offense, and then um, we played the number one defense. I mean, number one offense in the Pac-12, and they kept scoring as well. We got them. To, we stopped them on a fourth down. They missed a field goal. We were down 18. We came back to make it down three. And then um, we had a third and 11 that we thought we stopped them. But um, there was a flag thrown, and we didn't. And they scored a touchdown there. And then we um, couldn't get in the final point. Specifically on defense, in the three pack losses, there were eight touchdowns in the third quarter. Are you seeing anything there? No, I think we're, we're, we're just get, living, giving up too many touchdowns, period. Um, I think that's what it comes down to, that we need to continue to get better um, in that regard. I'm not sure that it's... Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't see it more as a halftime adjustment. I think in the Oregon game, um, they were pretty good the whole game. I think in the uh, Cal game, it was 24-21 at halftime. And then it was, uh, you know, they, they kept scoring, but they didn't really, we never really stopped them from scoring in the first half either. So it was really more of just the game is going that way. But uh, I think kind of that's what college football is looking like right now as well. Uh, you know, when you look out there and you see Tennessee, Alabama, and you see 52-49, you look out there and you see Oklahoma versus Kansas, and you see 50, 488 yards of offense and 52-42, I think it was, or something like that. You look out there and you look at, I think Michigan ran for 488 yards against Penn State, um, and it was, I think it was 17-16 or something at halftime, and then it was 41-17 final. Um, I think you look at the USC-Utah game, it was 43-42. Um, both teams, I think they, they combined for 1,000 yards. Um, I just think college football right now, or for the most part, a lot of teams are playing with a lot of good offenses, and offenses are doing a good job of scoring points. Uh, whether that be in the first half or the second half. And um, it, it's certainly making, uh, making it fun if you're calling plays on offense and making it challenging if you're calling plays on defense. But um, the quarterbacks are showing up, and uh, we're fortunate to have the one we have. Um, when you go out there and complete 75% of your passes and can throw for four touchdowns and not turn the ball over, it's a good day's work. Is that because there's a trend of great offenses going in college football versus uh, defenses that are struggling? Uh, I think a lot of rules are in favor of the offense. I think um, 20 hours a week to prepare um, is very challenging on defenses. I think that uh, when you look at it, you've got a, you have a lot of different formations you can throw at teams on offense. Um, in pro football, you don't have those same formations that you can use. All the unbalanced sets are very different. Um, you have a ton of space with the way the hash marks are set up in college football. You have the RPO game, which is um, officiated a little bit different in college football. And you have the ability, uh, you have a lot of kids that are great athletes playing quarterback right now, and a lot of great quarterbacks. Uh, defensively, you have to adjust to all of that. You have to be able, you have to actually defend all of that. And that becomes a challenge. And uh, I think that's what's kind of happening a little bit. Um, tackling is less and less going on in training camp. There's a lot of, you know, awareness of full pads and how you prepare. So all of those things, I think, sometimes indicate 
a little bit less on the, you know, a little more offense, a little less defense, but that's no excuse. We're going to do everything we can to become a much better defensive football team and be able to maintain being a good offensive football team and try to be a lot better than we've been on offense. I still think I continue to watch our film and say we leave at least 100 yards out there every week. And that this week, certainly no different. Uh, yeah, he has, and I think that he should be good to go. It'll be up to treatment, rehab, but nothing, uh, nothing structural that would. It was a day, but nothing structural that would affect his ability to play in two weeks if he's feeling up to it. From a physical standpoint, injury and all that, is the bye coming at a, a pretty good time for you then? Yeah, you know, we've been fortunate, knock on wood, that our guys have stayed relatively healthy with a couple of guys that have been dinged up throughout different times. You know, it's nice to give Jacob Cowling a little bit of a break, um, you know, based on just get his ankle back to being 100%. Jaden got rolled up on at the end, get his ankle back to 100%. Uh, Josh, see how good he can get over the course of time. Tia, uh, get him back. Isaiah Rutherford, um, he should be back. I, I would hope Mike Wiley, um, the timing comes at a good time for him. Um, I think that would be it. it. Speedy, probably a stretch for USC, um, but we'll see. We'll see, you know, it's a, his injury is a little bit, because of the surgery, just takes a little bit longer to heal. But uh, the rest of the team, I would say, I would expect everybody to be healthy other than Speedy, let's call it, for SC. And Speedy, I would say, is at a question mark. Would someone like him be a more a matter of considering holding him out so that he retains the, the year of eligibility? Um, you know, the, the rule of, the new rule for uh, red-shirting guys is you have four games that you can play so we'll have to look at how many play how many games he's played a rep a snap in versus how many plays we how many games we have left and then make a decision on you know if he played in one that would leave him three if he played in two that would leave him two and if he's back healthy and we have five left to go then he'll play what are the goals this week uh with the buyers to take advantage of things you want to work on specifically since you're not going to be worrying about the next game get better that is the number one goal get better in every phase uh, we're sitting here, you know, last year, week seven, we were 0 and 7. This year, week seven, we're 3 and 4. And our goal right now is to see can we get better in every phase, um, in all three phases, in every aspect of offense, defense, and special teams. Can we become a better passing team, rushing team, blocking team? Can we become a better tackling team, rush defense, pass defense, and a better kicking team? that we want to work on getting better in all phases. And um, that's, that's our best chance right now. Thank you.